well happy friday guys so today i'm gonna be talking about deutsche bank the largest bank in germany possibly going down and going over the trades i made in my two accounts one on the stocks profit firm and then one on the forex profit prop firm yeah <laughs> all right so um first let's hit let's hit the news first the deutsche bank because we're already here so deutsche bank is the largest bank in germany and they're looking like they're about to fail as well it has deposits of over 665 billion dollars of people's money and i'm wondering what's going on let's listen to this video well, the real problem with Credit Suisse, which is the, the analog, is they never made any money. Deutsche Bank is actually very profitable. So let's just let's start there. Why bail out a bank that is just a chronic loser versus a bank that's doing well? Well, the real problem with Credit Suisse, which is the okay. And let's also read. So I don't know. To me. Twitter has become a de facto news source like you can actually get on and find news easily like and it's not fake news even though it's people tweeting it you can see where the reputation stands like there's some incentive for people to have some reputation and to be true and to be right right so that's why you have that's why you're able to believe some people on Twitter because People are incentivized to be truthful, to be right, to be honest, okay? So Deutsche Bank has been a lousy bank stock since 2007, 140 to 8 in that time frame. Their derivatives have been a disaster for many years. The only surprise here is that Credit Suisse collapsed first. Wow. Deutsche Bank, too big. What do you mean too big? So it just seems like something is really going on. <laughs> As Credit Suisse fails last week and Deutsche Bank stock creators, someone drew $60 billion from the foreign central bank facility. The max amount possible. So let's see, what's this? Uh, emergency cash. Banks relied heavily on Fed money for second week. Wow. Wow. So 150 billion. I'm just really trying to understand what all this means and how how's it even gonna really affect us, you know? But won't hold you too long because I have to get on the road. So I'm gonna look at the trades now. I believe I had it there for real. And then the trade the pool. So today I had three trades, right? You know, I trade on the 15 minutes already. If I make this bigger, you can see it much better. And my strategy, I can see my strategy. And when it's not working, I can probably tell now. I'm believing I can tell. So 13 and New York time. 13 is like, let me check it on my phone. Maybe 13 is 9.33. Let's see. Yes. So 13 is 9.33. So having this on the New York exchange time. Um, 9.33. So on this candle, I entered to the upside. I wonder why. Probably the MACD. So I was entering to the upside. Huh. Got stopped out at 307 within the same candle. 30790. 
So I had a kind of tight stop loss there. Hmm. This is where I entered. So I could have gotten a bigger move, but it wouldn't be worth the risk. So I lost a total of 55 on this trade. Not bad. Not bad. Overall, the trend was bullish, but it, you kind of got some some trickery there. This would have been the best place to enter the previous day low. Okay. So I had one trade for 55.50, right? This isn't showing me my trades. Uh, let's see. Gonna log in, log out and log back in. So we fixed it. So here are a total of fifty eight fifty and I entered on the nine forty five candle here. Nine forty five sell side. Okay. And then we can clear those three oh eight zero four. I entered to the sell side. As it started to kind of push down, I got stopped out within two minutes as it started to break up. But that's why I didn't have such a big stop loss because the market didn't, it still wasn't even showing any direction. Like you had witness on the mat, the honestly, I shouldn't have even entered these. You know why? I had no indicators. Like I had no. Bearish engulfing, no bullish engulfing. I just entered. I just entered because I had a MACD and then I didn't get the usual nudge, right? So that overall was bad for the strategy. Um, this was the final trade. So this was at, so that if nine was 13, 15 is 11, so I entered at 11, 20, 1. Eleven twenty. On the 11, 15 candle. Okay, so I entered to the sell side here. Wow. I timed the bottom, but I entered with a small amount of shares. Because I just didn't feel confident about the trade. And it started to really go against me. But you can see that I can see where a pivot was. Enter to the sell side. But the MACD was telling me bullish. That's a poor, poor trade there, sir. Not amused. 307, 5, 5. But I like the stop losses. The stop losses are nice. They let me know that I'm wrong very very quickly so i had here entered here to the downside got stopped out there okay but looking at the charts what was this saying oh this was saying like kind of bearish kind of bearish but the mat is kind of saying that move but i didn't really believe it so i missed out on this nice 307 to the upside wow nice okay so the next trades I had were on this account. So I traded the NASDAQ 100, you know, it's the same as the QQQ, but it's just the index, right? And we found out that on yesterday's video that the time is the Cairo Egypt time. So if I'm looking at this and I'm looking for 03, Two four fourteen ten, All right? Can okay, actually put these together. Nice. This can go nice. Okay, so here we have four trades today. I entered one at fourteen ten. That should be correct. Let me see. 
14, 10. Six five zero. So I entered here to the sell side with a stop loss twelve six eight five zero, and I got stopped out on the twelve forty five candle on the. 1445 candle. I wasn't quick to stop out there. I could have gotten the swing to the upside there though. What was I missing? I didn't pay attention to the MACD. And the MACD kind of showed you weakness there. Take it to the upside, sir. This is a bullish play. If I entered here with a stop loss there, it would have been a nice, nice trade. Nice. Okay. So I got stopped out twelve six eight one six zero six zero. Okay. So I got stopped out when it kind of confirmed that you go in bullish before you have a push down here. But what I'm also seeing, I didn't enter on any of my strategies or just the MACD. I kind of got more MACD bias today so that was the first trade second trade was at 15.34 so i'm just gonna put a candle there so this was a bearish engulfing okay so i entered on my strategy here 15.34 12 6 8 7 6 8 7 what was this it was to the buy side to the buy side so I entered to the buy side here when I had a bearish engulfing yeah and I got stopped out at 12 6 4 let's put it on the same camera 4 1 I got stopped out on the Entered there on the 34. I got stopped out on the 15 for on same candle. Um 12641. 641. Okay. So I entered to the buy side here, got stopped out there. Fifteen four nine. And I entered this one at twelve six two seven two seven three zero. Oh, I entered here to the sell side, and I got stopped out on the forty five candle fifteen forty five. Stopped out, guys. Look at these stop start. Twelve dollars twenty three twenty three twelve dollars. I tried to keep the risk low, and if I get a nice swing move, I'm looking at a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, like a hundred percent. Like if I got that swing to the upside, I would have been looking at um more than a hundred dollars. And you see, I'm risking less than a hundred dollars per trade. But if one works, I let it rock out. That's what I'm gonna do. Just let it rock out. But you see that the strategy can actually show you something. But I entered to the downside here and I got stopped out here. So I didn't have a huge stop loss either. I'm like, yo, if I'm wrong, let me know. Like, don't mess with me right now. So I entered here 17 now. 17, 15 candle. So what did I do here? Sell side. So I got the bottom. Um, I got the bottom candles like i get the pivotal candles from what i'm seeing but 
It's just getting the direction and then putting on size. That's the only thing I need to be doing on the strategy now. Look at this. I get a pivotal point in the market, have a tight stop, and when I get this, yeah, I'm eating. I'm eating for the day, I'm telling you. All right? So I entered here to the sell side. So obviously I should have went to the buy side, but I got stopped out. Like it let me know quickly that I was wrong on the next candle. Three, six, five, zero flat. I put a nice little level there. That's a entry level as well. Three, six, five, zero. But that was on this candle. That was on the 18, 17, 30. Yeah. Of oh, six five zero. Nice. Ah, ooh. Why you? It's okay. It's okay. Cause it moved up anyways. But um, basically, I could have gotten this move to the upside. What was the Matt Lee saying? Matt Lee was telling me bearish here. So the MACD kind of went weak bearish. There was no um bullish engulfing nor three line strike bullish move either. So I had not a lot of reasons to enter this trade to the downside rather than MACD and previous. Okay, so I had a bearish engulfing candle here. And then I had Matt Lee, so I I can see where I entered this trade. So this could have been a nice reversal trade. And I have my stop loss below here. Nice stop loss. Clean risk off the table. And you're looking at, let me see, I wanted to calculate that as well. So let's look at today. So I have the price range thing here. And say from where I entered down here. And you held it. So 12. I wanted to calculate that. With the amount that I'm risking. So like small amount. And then I can look to get all of that move. So 12. 8. 0. 2. Right. Let me even do it on the screen. Yo, I hope one day I just build a community and everybody's like willing to participate and we can just go through some stuff together, even live. That would be cool. And I hope I get super rich and everybody gets rich as well. And I'm able to make a lot of people rich by me learning a skill that seems like on top, but there's a huge potential, right? So I wanted to actually calculate this at 12802 because this is the way I've been finding to kind of calculate what's the possibility so yeah that's what it's saying 185 around 185 I don't need to calculate it 185 and then it times that by I'm risking 0 0.4. So 74. But then you have a stop loss of... Let's look at the stop loss as well. So the stop loss is this the difference between this and uh, this. So 12... Six five zero minus twelve six one seven, and that's typically where I keep the range. And let's see if it would work if I flipped it to the other side. So thirty three times zero point four, because that's a lot size. So I'm risking thirteen to make seventy four. In that instance. If you get that move, 13 to make 74. So that would be a max risk. And as you can see, it's about 13 there. Like, I found a way to get the math to get the result. So you can see where, say you're risking a 0 0.4 now, right? 
risking a 0 0.4 and you have like 33 pips so 0 0.4 33 times 4 so you're risking 132 there 132 for that downside if you get that downside for the 185 times 740 interesting interesting that's why i like some of these moves and you just have to be able to hold it through okay i hope this provides you some value and you can actually see what i'm working out here it might be a little bit more complicated hopefully someday i'm able to just teach people directly provide some value but overall today i made no profits five thousand in it and this is the balance right now but i'm making trades i've had losing trades some winning trades but more losing trades but i'm trying to keep the losses very very tight and just make sense of it all and i'm actually making sense of it all i'm kind of stuffy i'll see you guys in the next video hope you have a wonderful weekend bye bye get shit done bro